Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here with you all again. I love Sundays. I love meeting with you. You really are amazing people. You really are family. And Cassie and myself count it a huge privilege to be leading this wonderful church of God. So, a while ago, I don't know if you're aware, but there was a boxer. And this boxer had a favorite saying. Every time after he knocked someone out, he would go and shout in front of the cameras, I am the greatest! You guys know what I'm talking about? Have you guys heard that boxing? And the world was looking at this guy and think, yeah, he's, he's pretty good, eh? But um, I don't know if he's that good. And in any case, it's really very arrogant to think, of yourself in that way to say such things about yourself it's okay if somebody else says that but if you say that about yourself it's a bit arrogant this is this kind of thinking is part of the reason why it comes as such a great surprise when the disciples ask Jesus who is the greatest in the kingdom of God he said and we expected Jesus right there on the spot to turn to them and say, Guys, what are you thinking? This is worldly thoughts. You need to repent of your stinking thinking. This is not really helpful. Stop it. Because in the kingdom of God, we're all equal, right? All of us are equal. That's what we think. That's why we expected Jesus to stop such things. But Jesus does the unthinkable. Jesus doesn't tell them to stop wanting to be the greatest. Jesus comes and redefines what true greatness is. And Jesus wants this morning to encourage all of us sitting here to become truly the great ones in the kingdom of God. Turn with me in your Bible to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, we'll be reading from verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the little child and had him stand among them and said, I tell you the truth, unless you change... And become like little children, you will never <coughs> enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me but if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than have to have two hands and two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, Gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes 
and be thrown into the fire of hell. So Jesus is on a journey with his disciples to Jerusalem. And the disciples are becoming more and more convinced that Jesus is the king of the kingdom. They're convinced that when Jesus goes into Jerusalem, he's going to take the throne, the throne of David. And you know, when Jesus becomes the king, there's a whole lot of very lucrative positions that will be opening up. Like who will be his advisors? Who would be in charge of running certain things? And who would be Jesus' 2IC? The disciples wanted to know, Jesus, when you enter your kingdom, when you take your rightful place as the king of God, uh, as the king of God's kingdom, who amongst us is going to be the greatest after you? And Jesus then warns them, he says, hey guys, don't be so hasty. Don't be so hasty to assume you're going to get positions in the kingdom. First, make sure you are in the kingdom. Because not everybody who was there talking to Jesus was in the kingdom. Just think about Judas. He was never in the kingdom. And Jesus says, it's very important for you to know whether or not you are in the kingdom. Because how can you aspire to be one of the great ones in the kingdom if you never even are in the kingdom? So Jesus gives them two very important indications to know whether or not they are in the kingdom. He says the first thing that happens when you enter the kingdom is you undergo a change. There's two words used for change in the Bible. The one's got to do with change of thinking. This one's got to do with a change of behavior. Jesus says, everyone who enters the kingdom undergoes a change and they become humble like a child. True humility like found in a very innocent young child. You see, in our day, Children are sort of the main thing. Everybody just, the children are the most important thing in society. But in those days, things were very different. The children were the nobodies. The children had no value. They could add no value. They couldn't farm. They couldn't work. They couldn't do house things. Instead of adding, they took stuff. Somebody that was supposed to help with the farming or the cooking or something had to give up their time and look after the children. So they cost time, money, food, all of these things. So because of that view on children, children were viewed as the lowest in society. They were the outcasts. They were completely dependent on their parents for everything. If the parents didn't look after the children, if the parents didn't feed the children, the children would die. If the parents didn't house the children, the children would die. If the parents didn't look after the kids, there was no hope. And Jesus says, everybody who enters the kingdom of God needs to have this change of action. This change that says... I'm not going to provide for myself. I'm trusting the king like a child trusts their parent. I'm trusting Jesus that Jesus will provide everything I'll ever need. I don't have to worry. I can simply trust the king. You see, in God's kingdom, there's only place for one provider. Only one person has got the role of providing for the people. And that's the king. And he's done it in the most stupendous way that you can ever imagine. He's done it brilliantly. He's done it excellently. And everyone who enters the kingdom acknowledges that. But that's not the only way that you know you've entered the kingdom. 
the next, the second thing that Jesus gives us to know whether we've entered the kingdom or not is probably bigger than the first. You see, the kingdom of light, God's kingdom, is die in a direct clash, in a direct opposition with the kingdom of darkness. Everybody in the kingdom of light has had a change and wanting to sin or not. If you don't want to sin, if you hate sin in your life, if you hate it so much, you'll tear out your eye if you can. It shows that you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You see, the devil comes and tells us, if you still battle with sin, you're not really in the kingdom. Not really. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The fact that you don't want to conform to the kingdom of darkness. Whether you get it right or not. Just the fact that you don't want to. Shows you that you are in another kingdom. Shows you that you are in God's kingdom. But God doesn't want you to only enter the kingdom. God wants you to be one of the great ones in the kingdom. And therefore it comes as no surprise that humility, the way you enter the kingdom, is also the first major key that Jesus gives us on how you continue in the kingdom. You see, people sometimes think, Humility is thinking nothing of yourself, <clears throat> of thinking you're a flurlap, a rubbish, good for nothing, then I'm humble. If you think you're useless and you can't do anything, such a humble person. That's not the biblical view of humility. The biblical view of humility is coming under the Word of God. If you want to be humble, in the kingdom of God, you have to be teachable. Teachableness is one of the great signs of a truly humble person. As teachable as a child is. As humble as a child is. Have you ever seen if a child doesn't know something? They always ask why. Mahukom. Mahukom. Why? And sometimes we get irritated with children for asking why all the time we shouldn't because in God's kingdom guess what faith comes by understanding why God wants you to ask why so that you can understand so how can you understand the word of God if you don't know the word of God how can you know the word of God if you don't give yourself if you don't devote yourself to continual study of the Word of God as long as you breathe, as long as you live, if you want to aspire to be great in the kingdom of God, you need to give yourself to continual study of the Word. And not just study of the Word by yourself. Also study in the way that the Word says and the way the Word shows how to study the Word. <coughs> Jesus studied the Word with His disciples for three years. <coughs> when you want to be great in the Kingdom of God, there's no place for isolation. You have to come and join and study together the Word of God. This is how you will know the Word of God. This is how you can humble yourself to come under the Word of God. This is how you can become great in the Kingdom of God. By devoting yourself to the study of the Word of God. The next thing Jesus shows us that the truly great ones in the Kingdom do. The ones 
that really are the great ones is they practice hospitality. They receive one another. Now all of us like having a braai with our very close friends. But the truly great ones in the kingdom receive those who cannot repay back the favor. The truly great ones in the kingdom invite those who don't have as much shine as all the others. The ones who are always on the edges, standing by themselves, alone. The great ones in the kingdom purposefully goes out, seeks them, finds them and receives them. Loves them, opens their home to them, feeds them. The truly great ones love the least amongst us. Just like Jesus does. The last thing that the truly great ones do is the truly great ones amongst us don't give the outcasts a reason to lose trust in them. You see what happens when you, when God elevates your profile, not you, you just do what God says, but God starts to make your name great. As people start to look up to you, they start saying, wow, this is really a man or a woman of God. Now what happens is, they start viewing you like they view God. They say, if I want to know what God is like, I'm going to look at what does the guy look like who spends a lot of time with God. And when the guy who spends a lot of time with God breaks my trust, I end up being angry at him a little bit. But the great danger is the least amongst us start to get angry with God. Start to say, well, if this is what Christians are like, what is their God like? The greatest amongst us give the least amongst us, the children, the outcasts, no reason to doubt the goodness of God. It simply means this. You keep your word. When you say, I'm coming, you come. When you say, I'm going to do this, you do this. You simply let your yes be yes, and you know, no. One of the great signs of a great person in the kingdom is a person who is trustworthy. Who doesn't cause the other one to stumble and think, yes, these Christians are rubbish. One of the great blemishes on Christians today is the words of Gandhi. Gandhi said, if it wasn't for Christians, I would be one. If Christians could live according to the way Christ teaches, I would have been one. You see, God wants all of us to be the great ones in the kingdom. It might come as a surprise to you that God views that there are some who are great and some who are not great. God wants all of us to change the way we act towards Him and towards others. To become truly the great ones in the kingdom. To change the way we act to conform to true godly love. This is how we become the great ones of the kingdom. And God is encouraging each one of us here today. Each one of us to become great. God doesn't have favorites. 
God doesn't say, well, this one can, this one can't. Everyone's got the equal opportunity. Will you agree with God? Will you change the way you show love to your brothers, especially your brothers in the church? This is what God asks for us. What is your answer? Now, next time when I get the chance to preach, I will show some benefits of becoming great in the kingdom. And those benefits are really amazing. You're going to see there's a whole bunch of treasures that we find. When God says, this is a great one. Amen.